What is up everybody, welcome back to Case Digital. My name is Zach, and in today's video, we're going to answer the question of how do we capture or get the terminal output in Python. So for example, if you run something like os.system and then you run the system call of ls, which in previous videos I showed that ls will just print all the files or all the either files or folders within a current directory. If I run this program, what you'll see is that this runs that as well. But how do we, if say we wanted to assign this output to a variable to do something with it, how would we do that? Well, that's what we're gonna answer today. So without further ado, let's hop right in and start coding. So like in Python and actually like in really any programming language and programming in general, there's multiple ways to capture terminal, terminal output. However, unfortunately for OS, it is not one of those ways to do that. Um, we are essentially going to need a um, package um, called subprocess. So subprocess is a built-in Python package, so you don't need to pip install anything. But essentially, we're just going to say import subprocess, and then we're going to go ahead and we're going to get um, rid of that. And we're essentially going to say, I'm just going to say command is equal to ls. Um, and then I'm going to say our result because what we're trying to do is capture it, right? So we're trying to receive that output, and so that's what we're going to be our result. Um, is going to be equal to, and I'm gonna say subprocess. Now, even with subprocess, now there's multiple ways to capture your output. However, I'm just gonna use one. I think it came out with Python 3.5. Um, it's called run. So we're gonna just say run. Um, and then you're just going to pass in your command. Now, if I just pass in this, and I let's go ahead and let's print this. Um, result, result. All right. So if I run this, you'll see that that's essentially what I get. It says, hey, completed process args ls, and then it gives us a re return code of zero. Um, so it did not print. I mean, it printed this out, right? But then it didn't run or didn't, we didn't capture it. Result just looks like this object called completed process. So essentially we need to add a few arguments to subprocess.run to uh, allow us to capture that output. So there are essentially three arguments that we want to add to our run command, the subprocess.run, so that we can capture our output. So the first one is going to be capture output. And we're going to set that to true, right? Because that's the whole point of this. So if I were to run this um, with, with capture out as true, um, you will see that now our completed process uh, object has a few more things to it. So before it just had... Uh, if it had the args or that we passed in and then the return code, which is zero. Oftentimes when a program exits and it returns a zero return code, that means everything executed successfully. Um, and anything that is usually over like, or one or above, usually tend to have different outputs, but usually if they're not zero, it tends to be, unless you designed it to not be zero, it can be uh, mean that something went wrong. Um, not always the case, but um, can be the case. But you can see also though that now we've added a few extra things. So we've added standard output or standard out and standard out error. But if you'll notice, they've got this B asterisk, asterisk in front of this B uh, parentheses or single quote. And that means that everything in our standard out and in our standard error, as you can see right here, is going to interpret it, be interpreted as a byte string and not a just a traditional, just regular string, a text string. So to fix that, what we can essentially do is say text and then set this equals to true. So now if we run this, we can see that our completed process object, if we go over to standard out and standard error, there's not a B in front of that, which means that these values are just strings. So that also means that you can say result dot STD out, which is typically what you're going to want to get, unless you know that when you run this program, you're also going to want to get the error value. You can, you know, and you can get whatever error code comes out of there. But obviously if you're probably using the sub, sub process command, you're probably expecting it to execute just fine, but you just need to grab kind of that, what is normally going to happen. Now, and this is a very simple case, I'm using ls. You could do something with like a curl um, command. You could do something with other different commands that you're trying to you know, execute, but maybe it's just, it's easier to do it via the sub process because it act like a shell, um, like your terminal rather than, it, than write it out in Python. Um, so now if I rerun this with this standard out, what you'll see is I should just see whatever standard out gives me. So if I rerun this and just like that, it gives me that string. Now you'll see that, um, this looks like, Hey, here's all the files that it gave me, um, in that, in a string format, because if you remember going back to kind of, maybe I'll print both of these here, um, dot standard out. And if I run this. What you'll see is is in the subprocess completed. This is literally just a string. So oftentimes you'll see all this be, or the, these new lines here because 
in in the output of ls it says that hey there's a new line there so that's why everything is kind of listed like this you know so that is essentially how you can capture it now i did save the three there is another one that you can add and it's called shell equals true um and then if you do something like this ideally this should return the exact same result however the one thing to note when doing with this is this makes everything in sub process run through like another shell, like an, another version of the shell. So it's not maybe, you know, this exact she uh, shell that you're running in. Um, but it, it basically in the back end, it starts up another shell and, and goes off and run. Um, and that can be helpful. There's times to do that. And there's times that that may not be helpful. Sometimes maybe the commands that you're using, maybe that is best to do it in a shell or, or not. Um, but again, you can still capture the standard output if, if shell is not on, um, just like we've done here. So um, that's essentially how you can capture the text from an output using um, your terminal and capture the terminal output. You will notice though that um, that in the IntelliSense here uh, is is yelling at me saying, "Hey, um, there." It's used without specifically defining this variable um, or this parameter called check. So what is check? Essentially, check basically says like whether or not it's going to error out or not. If you if you don't run it with check, um, or if you do want it to check, what it means is like, hey, it's going to check if it's a if it's a zero. Like our command thing said, or our return code was a um, a one or a zero. It's basically going to check if it returns back a return code of zero. Um, if it doesn't, and you put check is true, it's going to uh, throw an, a, an exception. But if you if you don't want it to check because hey, you don't really care what the re the return code is, you just want the value, um, and then it'll just it will it won't throw the exception. Uh, an example of that is something that uh, let me just show you an example of that. So here's true. We'll set this to true. Wow, cannot spell true. There we go. So with that true, let's run our command again. Um, everything should work just fine. Uh, but what happens though, if we go ahead, I also want to show this, like if we want to do something like a command, but it takes multiple arguments, like what do we do? Well, oftentimes you can turn that lit, you know, that just string command into a list of strings, like ls as our first command, and then say an argument. Now let's do something where it throws an error. So show what happens with this check. Um, and I can also, uh, so if, if, we, if we want to do ls and we say it like a, a non-existing file, non-existing.png or whatever. Um, and we go ahead and we run this again. What you'll see though is I don't have a non-existing.png in my file system where I'm checking. So what's going to happen is it's going to throw um, this error. It's going to raise, when you do a check, it's going to raise an error. Now, if I take check off and I run this again, it, you can see that it doesn't. Check inherently, I believe, is, uh, is false. And so without check being on there, we get that, hey, you know, this is your argument that so print in, we got a return code of one. Our standard out has nothing now, but our standard error says ls is, um, the standard error just contains what the string is. Now, if I do um, check is equal to false, what you'll see though is the same exact thing, right? So just like I said, it, it probably just check is inherently false. So it's probably good to have these in there, be, um, uh, check either true or not, depending on what you're trying to do, because maybe you want to capture that error that, that you know, if, if that, ex, uh, that exception that gets thrown just in case, because um, it's throwing this subprocess called process error, because, hey, we exited with an executor that was one, and, or an exit command or exit code that was one, and so that means that this, this command or this subprocess failed. So that might be good to check or to put in your program because what happens if you're running your program and this is in your program and then you have a check as false and it just keeps going through like and you don't know that it failed. This might be a good thing to add is to turn um, check to true. So that way you can know like, hey, like I when this fails, I know that maybe maybe uh, a file that was supposed to get populated in that area when I ran this command didn't for some reason. And now it's not there rather than it just skipping on through um, and doing something like oops. You know, skipping on through and just running through this command. Um, unless maybe you do something that standard out and you check to make sure that that's not an empty string. So those are those are the caveats. If you do a check as false, um, maybe you need to check something with the standard out to make sure it's not an empty string. Um, or maybe just turn on check is the true and handle the exception. So essentially, that is how you can um, capture or get the terminal output in Python using this subprocess module. Again, like I mentioned, there's multiple ways to do this, but this is just a very convenient way of doing it is just calling run, passing in your list or a string of a command or a list of 
uh, commands to have it run through and make sure you hit capture equals true. And then we take the text and convert it to text or convert the, the output and convert it to text by using this. And then we can also pass in it to a shell and whatnot. So I hope this provided value. If it did, please hit that like button. Um, and if you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. If you have any other additional questions on any other different topics, I do have a Google Forms um, that should be listed in the description below where you can go and fill that out, put in your question, and that's what helps one me know exactly what you guys are looking for and how I can help answer your questions specifically. So um, go ahead and fill that out below. And until next time, keep on programming.